Amen. <laughs> I thank God. So I was able to notice one of the reasons why I always have too much break. So I saw that one of the reasons is listening to what I did. So I this one I didn't even listen to it at all. Immediately I posted, I just came back for this next one. Because I'll lose it anytime I'm listening to it, you know. I will want to relax, I want to do so many things from there I might get tired. But similarly, I come like this for the next one. I don't, there's no need for that. So we thank God for helping us to overcome one of the reasons for too long breaks. <laughs> and we want to thank God for the word of God that is moving. You know, I could really feel the power of God in the last podcast. And it would have actually want to make me to listen to it again. But <laughs> there's no need. We have a lot to catch up with. As I was not getting tired watching how to do online video, online, online course, so I should not get tired doing this too. Whew. So we want to, we want to do another topic, flee sexual immorality, you know, it's always our topic, no man, no man, that's our, <laughs> our, how do I put it, like our main, main topic that we're always dealing with, so. God is bringing us, he bringing it to us again, to remind us again. Maybe some people have listened to it in the beginning of the of the podcast, and they're like, ah, let's rest. At least maybe God has forgotten that part. So God has not forgotten, so he's bringing it up again. Before we move to Father, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come again. Thank you, Lord, for the strength, for the healing. Thank you for taking all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the renewing strength, Father, we appreciate you. Be glorified, be magnified in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I'm here again as a vessel unto honor before you. Please come and help me. Fill me up with the Holy Spirit, have your way. Take control, take charge, destroy the plans and the purposes of darkness in the name of Jesus. Father, the word of God, I want to hear it again. Father, Lord, please use me for your glory. Fill me up with your spirit. And refill me up with the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Anything that wants to stand against me, Father, let the blood of Jesus Christ wash them away in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, please help me continue to keep me in the sight of God so that the word of God can continue to move faster in my mouth. Father, Lord, if any of these things are asking me to do, if I do I do contrary to any one of them, it will be difficult to preach it. Please, God, I pray. Keep me in your side, God. Please don't let my testimony be destroyed. Please have your way. Have mercy on me. Help me. Keep me in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, come and teach us as we want to listen to your word again. Open our understanding. Give us spiritual insights. Give us spiritual understanding in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God continue to move faster. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. We thank God. So we want to uh have we prayed very well. Oh God, let it preach to people's eyes and let it bring people to yourself. Don't let it be just uh, I've been hearing before. Okay. No problem. No, let it actually go out with power. That will turn people to yourself. In Jesus' name we have prayed, Amen. <laughs> now I feel like we have prayed it completely. Before before I was like, Have we prayed? <laughs> Have we have we said everything? All right now, I feel like we have said everything. So we want to go to this topic: flee sexual immorality. Yes, we have always been preaching it. If you been, if you go and check the topics that we've had, you will see that it's a lot there. So again, God has it in another way for us again today. Flee sexual immorality. So we will go to that our common Bible. Bible verse, but it's not only one verse. I like few verses in that in that line, in that passage. First Corinthians chapter six, the topic is free sexual immorality. But here we have free fornication in that First Corinthians chapter six verse eighteen. But Notwithstanding, 
we can still it's still the same free sexual immorality free fornication free sexual immorality so when the bible says sexual immorality it's those type of sex that if somebody here that you did it they'll be like ha <laughs> you know <laughs> Do you know that the same way that somebody will get pregnant and she will be crying, will be like, God, God, why? And it will be so shameful. Do you know that some people actually get pregnant and they'll be like, ah, God, thank you. Some people actually pray for it, which means there are some pregnancies that are not dangerous. There are some pregnancies that are not shameful. The same way that are some, there are some sex that are not immoral. So it's not all sex that is immoral, but waiting for that time. Is what we are we are praying for and we are teaching, like it's worth the wait for. There is one of our topics too that said, sex is worth the wait for. Marriage is worth waiting for. You understand? It's something you should wait for. So these are the things we are learning to wait for the time when your sex is no longer immoral. So sexual immorality, those ones that will defile you, that will not allow the spirit of God to. To walk through you, you understand. Like um, the one that they were saying about Suleiman, I do what did they call his name? That was sleeping with different women. You know that was immoral type of sex. You understand, and that's why demons could use those kind of sex. Why is it? Shabi is sleeping with his wife. Why is it that the ones he does with his wife, they don't? They don't use it against him. Like, it doesn't fit the demons. Because that one is not immoral. He's married to that woman. But those ones he goes out to do with this other woman is the one that is feeding the demons inside of him that is making him look like he's powerful to people and lying to people and they still believe his lies. You know, despite all that he's doing now, a lot of people are still in his church. It's the demons that is feeding, that is allowing... That is blinding the eyes of people, of people in his church, not everybody. Some of us, our eyes are not blinded. Our eyes are opened by the grace of God, and we will not go blind spiritually in Jesus' name. Amen. You understand? So, it's because it's immoral. So, the Bible wants to teach us flee sexual immorality. Those type of sex that are immoral, no matter how much you you see this person admirable, like for a lot of men, you know, some men try to justify it like uh, they have to, they have to, they cannot take their eyes off a woman that is falling into temptation. Whereas God doesn't want you to even fall into temptation. By the time you are seeing yourself like that, like you cannot overcome this temptation, then you are already off the track of of what God wants you to do. Because that's not the duty of man. That's not what God asks man to be doing. God has a bigger assignment for man. You are created to to lead. You are created to to assign. You see, one of the work God gave it and said, "Give names to these people." These are the things God asks you to be doing, and you can't be doing these things when you cannot control yourself. You understand? You see dog, you sleep with dog. You see goat, you sleep with goat. You see sheep, you sleep with sheep. If Adam, do you think Adam did not feel like sleeping with? Somebody, when God created him, God created him with everything in his body complete now. Even his manhood was working. So he could have been sleeping around with all these things. So by the time he was sleeping, you see, you see, uh, monkey, he sleep with monkey. He sleep, you see goats, he sleep with goats. He's sleeping around with those, with those animals. You see, you see snake, he sleep with snake. You understand that is what happens to you by the time you cannot control yourself. Because only one Eve God created for Adam, which means it's only one woman God created for you. It's only one woman that you pick as your wife that is not going to make you, that is not going to give you immoral sex. You understand that is going to make your sex approved by God. That one that God gives you. But we have also learned a lot of things about how to choose the one that God approves of. You understand. We have learned this marriage is covenant marriage is from God. Marriage is is your destiny, my marriage and your destiny. So many things like that. So it's only that one that agrees with all these things that will not be immoral before God, and that is the one that God come and choose for you. God come and give to you. 
A lot of men today, they don't want to wait on God. They are allowing their mouth to be pushing them when they are not animals. You see, that is how animals behave. When they just see the fellow one that is naked like them, they go and sleep with that one. That's not how God created human beings. God didn't create us like that. God did he create us to be uncontrollable? Especially men. Your God has given men a lot of sins. Nowadays, we are seeing women coming out, doing great things. You understand? Before, it used to be men that were doing most of these things. But nowadays, men, they are dropping all these things under the, the feet of these demonic women. And you want to say that you cannot control yourself. So which one is more important? To just be... Whereas it's not as if you will still not have this sex. But it should just be with just one woman that you are married to. What does it take you to just plan your life and say, let me get married and have a woman that I wake up to every day I am responsible for and we are able to raise a family that God approves of? There's no big deal in that. Then why do you have to sleep with this one, sleep with different women, break different women's hearts? And abort so many pregnancies just because you are very careless. Can't you see that the devil is tracking is trapping you? Can't you see it's the trap of the, 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 the of darkness? Can't you see it's the snare? Snare of darkness. What does snare do? Well then it says snare of the fowlers to kill the birds. You understand? It will kill the birds now. So you are falling into the snares of the fowlers. Can't you see it? I pray that as this word of God is going out, and as many that will listen to it, may God open every one of us eyes to see it. May God give, make us that type of man that has understanding. We have discussed it, the man that's void of understanding. May God make us that type of man, that kind of woman that has understanding. That has understanding that as much as you are thinking, oh, I, I have slept with this woman and left her, you are actually not... <laughs> Sleeping with her and leaving her. You're actually dropping something with her and going away with nothing. Because a lot of men don't know. They will think, oh, I slept with her and I left her. No, you are not sleeping with her and leaving her. You have left something with her and she's going away with it and you are empty. That's why many of you don't think of life. You don't think of doing a lot of bigger things in life anymore. Look at people like uh, Pastor Luko. Yeah, look at people like Pastor Kumuyi. These men, how are they able to, to fulfill their destiny? Do you think they are the only two people God created in this life that they should start a ministry from scratch and then it should become great and great and great? No! But how are they able to do it? They are able to do it because the part of them that is supposed to be going out into the kingdom of darkness, they lock it up. So the one that is with them, they are giving it to God. They are giving all their attention to God. Same thing with me as a woman. You think if I am that type of woman that every guy wants to uh, have access to me, do you think I will be thinking of all these things I'm doing for God? No! And I think that is one of the things, one of the reasons why God has to, first of all, put me in, in the service of God before He fixed my marriage. Because many times I've prayed through about my marriage. Like I should just finish praying like this and then the man should propose marriage by the following day. But... God says that I'm not yet there. You understand? I'm not yet in that assignment. And one of the things the marriage will, will be doing is to preach the word of God to the world. You know, by the time we have been, I've been doing it alone like this, by the time my husband comes together with me, it becomes a power couple. You understand? We become a power couple and we are able to do more. One, we chase 1,000. Two, we chase 10,000. That is God's mathematics about power couples. You understand? So God has seen that, oh my daughter, you have not yet started doing this thing. You have not started chasing 1,000. Maybe I'm still chasing one now. And God wants to chase one, chase 1,000. <laughs> you understand? So God will be like, ah, I can't give you marriage yet. You understand? And I'm sensitive to the Spirit of God to know what God actually wants. A lot of women will be like, at this stage, I must marry, whether it's right or not. No, my own case is not like that. Because I really want to do it the God's way. Because I know how powerful marriage is. Marriage is not just and uh, we did wedding, we buy a share. Be no, it's more than that. It's about the assignment. It's about the goals. It's about the destiny. You understand? So what am I trying to say there? What I'm trying to say is that a lot of reasons, one of the reasons why a lot of men are not uh, spiritually opened, doing great things in life anymore, 
You know, once they just have a job where they are doing slave for somebody and they are paying them money, they are okay with it. Why? Because they, they are going into sexual immorality. They no longer think, oh, I need to think of how I can become great, how I can... They are just comfortable. So I remember one guy I met some time ago. I think God just wanted me to meet that guy to learn a lot of things. You understand? He said he's just comfortable with the soft life. You know, I was trying to ginger him into being a great person. He doesn't have those kind of dreams. You understand? You know, those are the kind of guys that we just prefer a girl that has no goals like themselves too. So when they see a lady like me who is ambitious, it's, they don't feel comfortable around me. You understand? Like, and that, that, that is what happens nowadays. You think the sex that you have is part of your needs. It's not part of your needs. Even if it's part of your needs, way to do it the right way. You can put this your sexual urge in, in check. The, Joseph got married at 30 years old. And I'm sure in those days, people used to get married younger than that. Because I remember the story of um, Judah in the Bible, you know. He has, see all the children he has had and had and had many, many like that. Even grandchildren, <laughs> you understand. To the point that he now got married to the wife of his of his son. That is to tell you that he, people used to get married very early. You understand? But he was able to keep his sexual urge for the one that will be sexual purity. For the one that will not make him go into sexual immorality. That is the will of God for us. That is the plan of God for us. God doesn't want us to just waste our life away, waste ourselves away, waste our destiny away. Men, stop wasting yourself away. Women too, stop wasting yourself away. What uh sleeping with men for money or sleeping with men at at any slight provocation does to you is that you will not be able to think big. Like I said, just like I'm a woman, many of these things I'm doing, a lot of men, God wants them to do it too. Same with women. If I can do it, a lot of women can do it too. But how do you get yourself to that point where you are able to do these great things? It's by allowing God to keep you pure. Because sincerely, nobody can do it by his own power or by our own power. I've checked my life. I've seen that it's the grace of God. While I was very, very young that I didn't even know about all this sexual purity, the Lord was keeping me. The Lord has never allowed the thought of uh, being loose to be in my head. I don't know how God has been keeping me. You know, I don't know when I, like, I'm trying to remember as far back as when I was young. I think that age, was I not six years old or so? Maybe I was very young, but I remember the experience. You understand? So we were playing around with some guys, not even some guys, an elderly man. Like, maybe he was in his teenage years then. You understand? And it was, it was just playing around with Then he would pick one of the girls among us, sleep on that one. When he goes to my own time, I beat him in the, in the stomach and he left me alone. You understand? Right? As young as that age, how did I know all these things? I didn't know. I was not, I was six years old girl. Will six years old girl get pregnant? But the Lord has not allowed that thought to be in my head, even as young as that. I also remember at the time too, how old was I this time? And I was also in primary school, but not six years. Maybe I was already around that eight, nine, ten. Let me just say around ten. You know, there was another elderly brother in our neighborhood then, and I and him were alone in the house, you know. Not in the house like that, in his shop or in his grandmother's shop, you understand? And he was trying to touch me, trying to... You know, I pushed him away. I don't even know what I did to him, but I did something to him that made him to leave me <laughs> with all with off force and, and ag- aggressiveness. You understand? You know, there's a way you tell a man, leave me alone, uh, leave me alone, uh, and he will still move close, you know? I can't remember what I did to him, but he left me. Like, the the way I made him to leave me, he left me strongly, like, he never came back, you understand? <laughs> he left me strongly, like, ah, I'm in the wrong place, <laughs> you understand? So he left me, you know, those are the ways they, these uh, 
these things happen to girls at a younger age. They'll be like, and I trusted him, he's a pastor. Like one story that I shared sometimes, and the, the lady was like, and, they, and, and they, nobody will believe me. The man is a pastor. The man is a pastor, but he's trying to sleep with you. Well, yet you are still calling me a pastor. In my own case, I, like I said, I don't know how God saved me. I don't know what made me to to push this man away. I don't know what made me to buy somebody in the stomach. I don't know. You know, so many experiences like that. I don't know how God did it. I can't really say. But what I'm trying to say is that one of the things, one of the ways God wants to use us as women is when we are sexually pure, when we can say no. You as a young girl, six, seven, eight, that you are, you are saying you are still very, you are not young, my girl. You are not young. You are mature to know what God wants you to do. You say one man is fingering your private part, but you, you don't know how to say no. I don't know. I don't understand. Anytime I listen to this kind of thing, I don't know. Maybe these girls are actually lying. You understand? Like that, like that, uh, Baba Ijesha's story now. They said the lady, the Baba Ijesha was fingering and she was staying there. I don't know, understand why a man will be fingering you in the first instance. I don't know why you will put your private parts down for a man to be fingering you, if not that it is the spirit of the devil that has forced of all inside inside you. Because why won't you know that this thing, you are not supposed to do it? God forgive me, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that it's my power. But what I'm trying to say is that there is something that will let you know that this thing, you are not supposed to do it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So don't don't give yourself over to men like that because that is where it starts from. You understand? Don't allow it. Don't say and let them just give me one money. You know there was another story on like the girl said the boy will give them or the men will give them banana and then they will sleep with them. No, please, please don't do all these things. These are sexual immorality. They will they will limit you. They will limit your brain. They will limit how far you want to go in life. They will not allow you to think of greater things. And this, a lot of this type of men, they like it. When a lady cannot think great, when a lady cannot uh, think of achieving great things, that's why many of them are, are running away from because they see that they can't put me under their, 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 their traps. You understand? But how did I get this much power that bad men are moving away from me? It's because I allowed God to keep me. If you want God to keep you too, he will keep you. The thought of all these things will not be in your head. And what will you be having? You'll be having the power to move far in life. You'll be having the power to do great things. Each time God will always bring great things into your head. Okay, my daughter, this is the next thing to do. Yeah, do it now. Because your, your mind is pure. Your brain is pure. And when the right person comes that can match up with, with what the assignment God has given you, then you can get married. But by the time it's just very loose... It's just into sexual immorality. Anything comes, anything goes. You will see that many women will not even be able to think of, okay, what should I do now to make money? They can't think of it. All they think, okay, let me sleep with one man. Okay, today they sleep with a man with more money. Tomorrow, let me increase it to a man that has bigger money. Until the one that will use them for ritual will come. They will not know. Or do you think a lot of these girls really want to enter into the trap of these men that use them for rituals? No. They don't want to, but there is a part of them that has gone far away that cannot make them to think straight again. I'm telling you, God didn't create women to be like that. God didn't create women to just be, uh, let me just find man to take care of. No, that's not God created women. The Bible says God created them male and female. Meaning the same things God created in male, the abilities to achieve great things God created in male, God put it in woman too. So if you as a man, you are being sexually immoral, you will lose these things God wants you to do. And if as a woman too, you are giving yourself over to this man, you are saying, I did not know, you did not know that he want to sleep with you. Like one man to when I was like 15 years old, was I 15 or 14? Or maybe 13, between 13, 14, 15, you understand? Around that age, I went to shop to bath my hair. And I was, you know, I was sharing my experience. You know, that's why nowadays it's so hard for me to to trust any man, even though I really want to because I want to get married. 
But you know, you are talking with a man. Oh, this is my dream. This is what I want to do. And he's thinking of how he wants to sleep with you. Like the movie I watched yesterday, the lady was so happy. Oh, I just finished my, my secondary school. Oh, I'm so happy. And they say, Oh, come to our house. Let's celebrate it for you. And they raped her. You know, God, you know, this kind of things. And the girl has a covenant that if, if anybody sleeps with her without marriage, she's going to die. That's how the lady died. You understand? You don't know you what oh oh my god what am i trying to say like i don't even trust men because what is on my mind is how to achieve great things not how to sleep with man not how to turn myself to a sex slave of man these same men that turn you to sex slave, they will insult you they will insult you that you are a sex slave but then they are the one that trapped you into doing something like that you understand so how do you do it you you ask god for the grace god keep me Keep me far away from all these things. Don't let me fall into the trap. Continue to pray every day. So one of the experiences I wanted to share. So I was I was bobbing my eyes like I was like a young girl, you know. Of course that guy is older than me. I was young. I was bobbing my head to go back to school, maybe a few days time or one week or whatever. And I was just and it was like I think he was enjoying I was talking, saying, just come to this room. I said, which room? <laughs> you know, from my younger age, I've been this kind of strong against men. I don't know how God does it. You know, many of them look at me like I'm acting like a man, but I'm not acting like a man. That is the right way I should act. So I'm supposed to say, no, brother, don't don't push me to the room. Oh. Then he push me to the room. Hello, brother, don't remove my clothes. Yo. No, brother. I said, which room? Leave me alone. And I ran out of the place. You understand? And that was all. I never, I never, did I even go back to his place to bat my head again? You understand? So that is it. Flee sexual immorality. We also have that topic. Is it the next one? Oh, it's the one we are doing now. <laughs> Flee sexual immorality. You understand? That is the topic. Flee sexual immorality. You are supposed to flee. You are supposed to stand strong. There was another one. I think that age, I was, I was, ah, primary two. Primary two, how old was I in primary two? Primary two, I was like, uh, ah, primary two, primary two, primary two. I was very young. Nursery three, I mean, nursery one, I was three years old. Nursery two, I was, I was four. Nursery three, I was five. I didn't read primary one. I just, I just went to primary, primary two. Primary two, I was six. Do you see how young I was? So the toilet of boy and girl is like the same. It's just as if you just open any door. If you open one door, it can be boy. If you open one door, it can be girl. So they didn't separate it like that. So it's just the corridor that that um, joins all of us together. Boy, and that boy was trying to push me to the girl. I pushed him. I fought with him seriously, as young as I was in that age. And this is the age where they will say hey, they caught some children sleeping with each other behind the door. They slept, they were kissing each other. I remember one time when we were very young, I and some girls and boys, we were doing hide and seek game. And we went and opened the door of one of the places where one boy and one girl stayed. You know, they were romancing themselves in that corner. And we were very young, as young as eight years old, seven years old. You know, that kind of age. But from youth, I never had this, from younger age, as young as that age, I never had all these things. So what are we saying? We are saying that flee, flee. It's not that you will try to pamper it. You will try to say, hey, it's not too much. And at least you are very young. Flee. Hey, okay, we just finger my 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 uh, private part alone and then you will leave me alone. Don't even allow it. Don't even allow it. Don't even go near. Don't go near. A brother that say, come to my house, let the Holy Spirit be a light in you. Come to my house. Don't even go to the house. Like that girl now, where they were able to get her is, come to my house, come and be doing extra lesson. Don't even go. Don't do extra lesson. Any extra lesson you cannot do in front or in the marketplace where everybody will see you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't stay alone in the same place with any man. Don't, don't give chance for all these things. Flee. Don't stay alone in the same room with a man. I'm saying we will control ourselves. You will not control yourself. The only reason, the only way where you can control yourself is maybe 
you are you are completely matured. Both of you are matured, number one, number two, and then you have other things you are doing together. That's why I always want that anybody I, I want to be in love with, we must have something we are doing together. Because if it's if you're not doing anything, it's only about talk, 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 talk. And I mean, not even talk, talk. If you are talking, it's still good. It's only about how to uh, say we I love you, I love you, I love that you are doing. And what does I love you, I love you do? It it gives you this kind of emotions in your spirit like i want to sleep with this person if that is all you want from me you we i'm not ready for that kind of relationship and the reason why i don't do such kind of relationship is so that by the day we are alone together we have something we are doing like that guy i told you that god said he approved of our relationship the day we were together alone we were doing something together we were building he was building gmail for me we were talking about his life. We were talking about his career. I was talking about mine. I was discuss- we had a lot to talk about. We can talk on the phone three hours without talking about sex. Without we don't even talk about sex. You understand? We don't talk about all these things because there are other things we are talking about. Are you getting it? So the Bible says, flee. We are supposed to flee. Whether it's the one you want to marry by tomorrow, tomorrow. Don't give chance for all those kind of things. And if you are going to talk about all those kind of sexual talks, then let it be at a time where you are not even very, um, like it's not alone with you alone that you will not be looking at each other's face in a way that uh, maybe we should do it. Now, don't see, don't give chance for that kind of thing. Let your brain, your mind, your spirit, let it be pure so that the Holy Spirit can move through you. You don't know that God likes holiness. God likes purity. He moves more in purity. He moves. His power moves. When God wants to move and he checks the crowd, he checks the pastor, he sees that this pastor is not, is not very right before God. The power of God cannot move through him. That's why you see many churches, they go to church like sinners. They listen to the sermon like sinners. They go to the house like sinners. If somebody come to the church with his girlfriend, he leaves, he still goes and sleeps with the girlfriend. Nothing. Because the power of God, when it was moving, the pastor did not allow the power of God to move in purity out of him. May God help us. So let's let's surrender ourselves to God, to be used by God. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this podcast. God, you have really spoken. Oh, my God. I felt a part of me living and living me. <laughs> and the part of God was taking charge. Father, Lord, we appreciate you. The word of God has gone out. Father, please help us. <laughs> Almighty Father, we are ready to do whatever you say. Like the children of Israel say, whatever you say, Lord, we will do. Father, we also we are saying whatever we will say, we will do. Father, please let this word has gone and let it bring people to yourself. Oh, Lord, as many people that are looking for, oh, God, how will I do it? How will I not sin against you? Father, let this word of God that is going out. Let it bring people to yourself. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, oh, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, take control. Take charge. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I see more of topics that you want me to put in this online class, online course. Father, please come and help me. Father, I'm available. I am available. There's nothing I'm doing. <laughs> you have collected all the works of working for man. You have collected it for me. So the only work I'm doing now is work of God. Father, I'm ready to do it. Please help me. By Sunday, let the let the let it be online in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. Father, please refill me up with the Holy Spirit. Let the testimonies that has gone out, don't let the devil destroy these testimonies in Jesus' name. Please continue to help me. Help us to flee sexual immorality so that you can be able to use us for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Let's, uh, okay. God, the word of God has gone. Let's do what you have asked it to do. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.